make sure you read the question five to a hundred times as usual. Um, have a nice, arguably not so pretty picture here. Um, you can find the solution to this question at the SOA exam P sample solutions website. They go about it in a very non mathematical way, not interesting way. They just count things in a very brute force way. I want to do it a different way. Okay. This is the way that I'd solve the question. Um, it involves a picture. I like pictures. So this is the picture I have. Um, basically, of course, you're in the question, but George and Paul pick a number between 1 and 20, inclusive, meaning they can uh, pick 1 and 20, right? And I want to know the probability uh, that Paul wins. So George wins, but if their, their difference exceeds 3, and Paul wins if their difference is, well, the opposite of that, so less than or equal to 3. So I want to compute, I want to know what is the probability uh, that the value that Paul picks, right, and the difference between the value of Paul picks and the value that George picks is less than or equal to 3. So y minus x less than or equal to 3. And of course, these are my random variables, right? They're just representing numbers. So x can be 1 through 20, y can be 1 through 20. I have them listed over here, kind of. I don't have the whole picture because it's kind of annoying to draw. But I have up through 10, and then I have a little squiggle, and it goes up to 20, right? I'm sort of looking in this region, the, the, the uh, black square is the, the probability, the sample space, the region. And I'm looking for this absolute value, the difference less than or equal to three, this is what I want. Um, I have the picture over here representing what this, what this is in terms of the picture, it's this, it's this region right here. This region, this green, is actually uh, the probability that Paul wins. So I wanna compute that. Now, why is that true? First of all, why is that true? So that's because if you go to the definition of absolute value, then that means that this is equal to the probability that negative 3 is less than or equal to uh, y minus x is less than or equal to 3. This is by definition of what absolute value means. So nothing fancy. I just add x to both sides. This is equal to the probability that negative 3 plus x is less than or equal to y uh, is less than or equal to 3 plus x. All right. Hopefully you can see now it's exactly what I want. Y is, needs to be, the value uh, that Paul picks needs to be greater than the line negative 3 plus x. Uh, here's negative 3 plus x right here. So it needs to be greater than that, above it, and it needs to be below the line 3 plus x. Here's 3 plus x is below that line. So it needs to be in this region. That's what I'm looking for. Um, but alternatively, I could, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the desired probability by computing the probability I land in e the outside. This is where George wins. George wins here and George wins here. All right? Uh, this is where George wins and where George wins. I'm going to compute where George wins and then do 1 minus that. But wait, there's symmetry because this region, the area here, is exactly the same area as there. So I'm only going to compute one of these. It's going to be even easier. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. This is now equal to so the desired probability. Again, I want this. This is equal to, this is equal to 1 minus the probability that uh, the difference is strictly greater than 3. Now again, do some algebra. Do what you know regarding absolute value. Okay, This is equal to 1 minus the probability uh, that this is strictly greater than 3. Remember what absolute value greater than a number means. Either the thing inside is greater than the number, or the thing inside is less than negative of the number. Okay, so or, or the thing inside is less than negative the number. Okay, now, 
again, I mean, we want to do things as simple as possible. So if you look at the picture, you'll see that, I mean, these two regions are exactly the same. This is saying y is greater than 3 plus x. That's this region up here. This is saying y is less than negative 3 plus x. That's for this region down here. These are equal. So these two are the same value. These are equal. So let's just compute one of them and multiply by two. That's what I'll do. So this is equal to, uh, this is equal to uh, one minus, and I'm just going to uh, compute this one because I feel like it. So this is equal to one minus twice the probability that uh, y, so I'm computing this one, y is less than negative three plus x less than negative 3 plus x. That's the same thing as saying it's less than or equal to negative 4 plus x. If I change the inequality uh, to less than or equal to, okay? Now this is equal to 1 minus twice. How do I compute the probability that y is less than or equal to negative 4 plus x? Well, this basically I can think of as a joint mass function a joint mass function. Y is going from, well, let's look at my picture. Y is going from 1 to uh, x minus 4, or negative 4 plus x, doesn't matter, x minus 4. Now be careful here, uh, what is x going from? Look at my picture again, we're computing this region. X is going from, in this region, what's as small as x can be? X can be 5. And notice that makes sense here as well, because if x is 5, then uh, this gives me a positive value. Why can only be positive values? 1 through 20. So x is going to go from 5 to 20. Look at my picture. x goes from 5 to 20. I'm just in a way thinking about this like a double integral. I mean, sums can be treated like integrals for the discrete case. What is my joint density function? The question doesn't say this, but I mean, we're picking these numbers uniformly. So it's just 1 over the total number of points. So they each have a density function 1 over 20, so I'm picking points 1 through 20, which means the joint function is 1 over 400. So 1 over 400. All right, so you compute this and I'm done. This is not too bad. I mean, start with the inside sum first, right? Uh, so uh, this is equal to, this is equal to 1 minus... Uh, 2, what is this sum equal to? This guy right here, if I want to compute this, then what do I do? I mean, the sum end does not have y in it. So this is just the total number of points here. How many points are there? Well, to figure this out, you always take the top sum end and subtract 1 less than the bottom. x minus 4 minus 0. So there are x minus 4 points. So this is minus 2 times, so this sum right here is 1 over 400 times x minus 4. So let's write that. Uh, 1 minus 2 times the sum from x equals 5 to 20 of x minus 4 over 400. Now this looks kind of horrible, but I'm going to utilize um, the finite sum of the first uh, n integers here. And I want to point out something else to make this look even nicer. What happens if I plug in x equals 5? Just looking at the numerator, in fact, I can just pull out the 400 if you like. If I plug in x equals 5, then the sum and starts at, well, 5 minus 4, so 1. Plug in 5, I get 1. Then I keep increasing, go up to 20. When I plug in 20, I get 16. So this is the same thing. This is the same thing as 1 minus 2, okay, times the sum from x equals, well, let me change it actually, k. Let's do k equals, k equals 1. When I plug in 20, I get 16 to 16 of k over 400. Now I'm going to use that formula. I'm adding up the k's from 1 to 16, okay, uh, using the formula that you should know for 
a probability course, um, adding up the first n integers, is that this is equal to 1 minus 2, okay? Uh, if I add up k from 1 to 16, it's going to be 16 times 17 over 2. It's going to be 16 times 17 over 2. And I still have the 400. extremely annoying that I'm in that corner. I tried to make it happen. <laughs> Super frustrating. Super frustrating. Let me just give myself a little room so you can see the conclusion right there. Okay, but I have it. I do have the answer. Okay, so this piece, this piece that I just did, I'm going to bring it up here. So, And we'll be done with it, right? So this we have one minus two times the sum from k equals one to sixteen of k over four hundred. If I was going to deal with this, I'd probably factor the four hundred out. So this is one minus two over four hundred is one over two hundred times the sum from k equals one to sixteen of k. Let me just be clear about this. Um, to add this up, you should know the formula for this. Very easy to prove it, actually. Just a little fancy trick. Um, this right here is equal to the top sum and the top bound, 16 times 16 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, that's what I utilized there. So meaning that my answer is 1 minus 1 over 200 times 16 times 17 divided by 2, which you should get is 0 0.32. This is the probability that Paul wins. Should Paul take this bet? Yes or no? Paul should not take this bet. Why should Paul not take this bet? Because what is the probability that George wins? George wins with a 68% chance. Paul will most likely lose. All right. Comment on the video and like the video. Thank you.